The holographic principle is this interesting mathematical relationship where you can take all the information contained in a three-dimensional structure, splat it out onto a two-dimensional surface, and that two-dimensional surface is able to preserve all the information contained inside that three-dimensional structure. One particularly interesting application of this holographic principle is what's known as the ADS-CFT correspondence. ADS is anti de Sitter space and CFT is conformal field theory. So let me break that down. anti de Sitter space is a particular solution to Einstein's equations of general relativity that describes a universe, a hypothetical universe, that's completely empty, completely devoid of matter and energy, and has negative spatial curvature. Negative spatial, cur spatial curvature, that's like uh, the saddle-shaped universe where you, have, you can have two parallel lines, they start out parallel and they'll end up diverging, that's negative spatial curvature. This is called anti de Sitter space, okay? Just, just leave that aside. That's a particular solution that describes a particular universe. Conformal field theory, uh, field theories are the bread and butter of modern physics. This is just how we do physics. This is especially how we do quantum physics. When you take raw quantum mechanics like Schrodinger, Heisenberg, all the rest, and make it compatible with special relativity, you get something called quantum field theory. This is how we understand electromagnetism, strong nuclear and weak nuclear forces through the lens of quantum field theory, a conformal field theory, for lack of a better term, it's just a field theory that, that behaves nice, that, that has certain mathematical properties, certain symmetries that are just nice, all right? It makes the mathematics pretty easy to handle. The ADS-CFT correspondence show, was shown that if you have a three-dimensional universe, you have a three-dimensional universe, and inside the universe, it has the geometry of this anti de Sitter. So it's completely empty, uh, but has negative spatial curvature. And let's say you're trying to do something in that three-dimensional universe, like, I don't know, understand gravity, especially quantum gravity, especially quantum gravity through string theory. If you're trying to understand quantum gravity through string theory in that three-dimensional anti de Sitter universe, you can take all the information content in the universe, splat it out to its two-dimensional boundary, its two-dimensional surface, and the problem changes form. Instead of trying to solve gravity in this three-dimensional universe, and that's super hard, it's replaced. The problem of gravity is replaced by a set of conformal field theories in the two-dimensional boundary. What that means, and I know this is like a jargon salad, but there's no other way to present this information because it's just all, it's just all these technical mathematical terms. What this means is that you try to solve quantum gravity in a three-dimensional universe. It's super hard, so hard that nobody has ever been able to do it, ever, despite decades of trying. And instead, you can play a trick. You can whoosh, splat all the information onto the two-dimensional surface. Gravity doesn't exist on that two-dimensional surface. It's a different set of mathematical equations on that boundary, on that surface. It's a bunch of field theories, a bunch of conformal field theories. And we have the tools. We have the toolkit to solve field theories, but we don't have the tools to solve quantum gravity. We don't know how to solve quantum gravity, but we do know how to solve problems in conformal field theories. So here's the potential application. The potential application is trying to understand and explain gravity in the first place. You have our universe filled with gravity. We don't really understand gravity at the quantum level. Okay, let's just make this transformation. Instead of trying to solve gravity in our three-dimensional universe, we're gonna to try to solve, we're gonna map it onto its two-dimensional boundary, solve a bunch of field theory problems on that boundary, take that solution, map it back into the three-dimensional universe, and we'll get some explanation for gravity. We can, we can make predictions, we can make mathematical calculations, we can figure out how the universe works. 
that's kind of cool. It's like it's like a, an end run around the problem of quantum gravity. Like, oh, we can't solve quantum gravity? Well, instead I'll just solve these problems over here and then come back and then I, I can still make predictions. Now, there are some weaknesses to this approach. One, we do not live in an anti desitter universe. Our universe is not empty. It is not devoid of matter and energy. It, it does not have negative spatial curvature. As flat spatial curvature is full of matter, dark energy, dark matter, normal matter, radiation. It's full of stuff, all sorts of stuff going around. So anti de Sitter is not a valid model for our universe as we experience it. Second, our universe is expanding with time. The boundary is constantly changing with time. And these ADS CFT theories don't quite know how to handle that. Third, just because we have the tools for solving field theories on these boundaries doesn't mean the problems are actually easy to do. These problems can be very strongly coupled. These problems can be very uh, not behave nicely. Even though they're conformal, the mathematics says they ought to behave nicely. The actual couplings between the field theories can be very complex, not easy at all, very difficult to solve. So it's you can't actually necessarily always get solutions here on the boundary that you can pop back into the three-dimensional volume and get your answer for gravity. And so a lot of approximations and estimations and mathematical finagling and shenanigans have to happen to even start to get an approximate solution to gravity. Now, let's say someone were to find a ADS CFT like mapping that takes our real normal universe that we actually observe, map it onto its two dimensional boundary. Our universe doesn't have a boundary, but you can take the cosmological horizon. Uh, that's good enough. Map it there, solve some problem, and come back and be able to make predictions for quantum gravity. Does that mean we live in a hologram? Does that mean that? Our three dimensions are an illusion and oh, we're just, we're just like ghostly holograms. Like are we literally holograms? Is our universe really two dimensional and it just appears to be three dimensional? <sighs> Not quite. Not quite. Because even if you could make this mapping make sense, even if there was a solution and it was able to make predictions and we were able to test it and it did pass all those tests and we could use it as a viable theory of quantum gravity, doesn't necessarily mean that's how the universe is because this is a particular route to solving quantum gravity. It doesn't necessarily explain electromagnetism, weak nuclear, strong nuclear, of you know, all the forces and fields and particles and energies of our daily lives. It's a mathematical convenience. In physics, we make all sorts of mathematical mappings all the time. Like we have a hard problem in one set of mathematics, so we map it to somewhere else so we can crank the handle, get some work done, then we map it back. We don't pretend that the mapping actually represents reality. So it would have to be a lot more than just a mathematical end run around gravity to try and understand it because they, you could still you could still make the argument like no gravity is a real thing or three dimensions are a real thing we've just discovered this mathematical shortcut so we can explain it doesn't mean the shortcut is the actual thing maybe i don't know it, it's it's kind of a vague argument I, I just it makes me feel a little bit uneasy to just straight up say like oh if this correspondence holds true then boom we live in two dimensions gravity is an illusion three dimensions are an illusion we actually live on the two-dimensional surface of our universe where gravity doesn't exist but it's just uh something that emerges at low energies i don't quite buy that because at one, because at this stage it's not even proven, it's not even demonstrated, it hasn't even been falsified, it isn't even mathematically rigorous or 100% uh, fleshed out, so it might just be a, a dead end in the first place. And two, even if it did work, just because it's a shortcut doesn't negate the existence of gravity in three dimensions. Hey, it's me again. I know you just watched a few minutes of me, but who couldn't use a little bit more me? I'm just here to beg you to please subscribe. And if I remember, there's going to be a button like right here uh, where I'm vaguely gesturing. So if you like what you just saw, uh, you'll get more of it if you subscribe. Super easy.